In an effort to circumvent the increasing conflict over land and facilitate passage into the Pacific Northwest, some Western settlers sought to assimilate the Native American population into their own. Protestant missionary Marcus Whitman hoped to achieve such an influence when he started Whitman Mission in a remote region of the Pacific Northwest near the Walla Walla River among a tribe known as the Cayuse. However, cultural misunderstandings, deeply seated mistrust, and growing frustrations proved to be catastrophic. Swelling social forces soon erupted into a cataclysmic release, and on November the 29th, 1847, Whitman and 12 others were murdered at the hands of their tribal members. The Whitman Massacre, more commonly known as the Walla Walla Massacre, set the stage for a violent war whose effects indefinitely changed the course of Euro and Native American relationships in the Pacific Northwest. On January the 18th, 1803, President Thomas Jefferson sent a letter to Congress detailing the measures that must occur in order to succeed in westward expansion and economic prosper for the country. In conjunction with his advice, Jefferson also petitioned for finances to fund an exploratory voyage today known as the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Gentlemen of the Senate and House of Representatives, the Indian tribes residing within the limits of the United States have, for a considerable time, been growing more and more uneasy at the constant diminution of territory they occupy, although affected by their own voluntary sales. And the policy has long been gaining strength with them of refusing absolutely all further sale on any conditions insomuch that, at this time, it hazards their friendship. In order peaceably to counteract this policy of theirs and to provide an extension of territory which the rapid increase of our numbers will call for, two measures are deemed expedient. First, to encourage them to abandon hunting, to apply to the raising stock, to agriculture and domestic manufacture, and thereby prove to themselves that less land and labor will maintain them in this better than in their former mode of living. The extensive forests necessary in the hunting life will then become useless, and they will see advantage in exchanging them for means of improving their farms and increasing their domestic comforts. Secondly, to multiply trading houses among them and place within their reach those things that will contribute more to their domestic comfort than the possession of extensive but uncultivated wilds. Experience and reflection will develop to them the wisdom of exchanging what they can spare and what we want for what we can spare and they want. In leading them to agriculture, to manufacturers, and civilization, in bringing together their and our settlements, and in preparing them ultimately to participate in the benefits of our governments, I trust and believe we are acting for their greatest good. Jefferson's sentiments were taken into great consideration and in order to facilitate trade and industry, the extinguishment of Native American practices was set in motion. As predicted, much of the Native populace in the Pacific Northwest shifted their trade interests from foreign competitors to Americans. As the American market strengthened, the Native populace severely suffered. Domestic labors proved to be at odds with many of the Native nomads. Over time, the same feelings of resentment and distrust seeped into the native people. When Whitman arrived to settle among the Cayuse in the year 1836, apprehensions were well established 
among the tribe's people. Following the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the United States government vigorously encouraged East Coast pioneers to travel west in search of land and economic prospects. Excitement spread as prominent state figures spoke accolades of the Pacific Northwest region. Seemingly untapped land was sold to farmers by the acre at a modest price. That coupled with the well-known recounts of Lewis and Clark's 1803 to 1804 military expedition triggered an Oregon fever that began to spread almost incessantly. Budding pioneers began to travel west. However, after overcoming arduous travel conditions, westward settlers faced another obstacle. Much of the land was already occupied by native tribes. In an effort to civilize and disperse the native population, the United States sought to indoctrinate the people to a culture comparable to their own. Many native people were displaced to reservations and oversaw by Christian missions. The Oregon Trail was the first overland wagon trail in the Pacific Northwest. Initially used by fur trappers and traders, it later became the gateway passage into Oregon's promised land. In its infancy, much of the trail could only be traveled by foot, horseback, or similar animal. Following the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, efforts were initiated to revolutionize steamboat technology to facilitate exploration. Likewise, the advancements in steamboat technology soon facilitated crossing mighty rivers along the Oregon Trail. By the year 1836, with the help of steamboats, bridges, and road improvements, Oregon wagon trains could navigate the trail with less risk and in less time. This development resulted in an influx of immigrant settlers in the Pacific Northwest. Among those settlers, Marcus Whitman and his party were the first far west as Idaho via wagons. The cultural values of a region can be perceived through its architecture. Before European expansion to the Pacific Northwest region, many Native Americans of the land were accustomed to living in minimalist homes. These homes were basic structures that suited both the climate and lifestyle of the tribe. In the case of nomadic tribes such as the Cayuse, temporary dwellings such as teepees were often used to facilitate travel. The influx of immigrants to Oregon greatly affected the architecture of the region and conversely affected the culture of its native people. Soon parts of Oregon were scattered with log cabins, quaint shops, and sometimes, when compared to those of the original habitants, extravagant homes. Native tribes who did not embrace the change retreated to reservations. Many of those who attempted to assimilate soon faced unbearable hardships. In the early 1800s, the Pacific Northwest streams rivers, and lakes were teeming with beaver. Trade in beaver pelts attracted explorers, trappers, and traders to the region. Logging was also aggressively pursued in the region with no forethought to sustainability, and in 1827, the first sawmill was built in the Pacific Northwest. Fur trading and logging not only aligned with the economic forces of the region, it also significantly impacted the environment. Incessant trapping decreased the population of beaver and other hunted animals so drastically that by the early 1840s, fur trading had nearly collapsed. That, coupled with the destructive effects of overlogging, led some regions of the Pacific Northwest to be nearly unrecognizable to the native population. As the need for resources increased, 
Native American land was further encroached upon. Soon, with only fractions of their land left, many natives were compelled to live among their European intruders and adapt their foreign cultures. The religious beliefs and practices of the European settlers often conflicted with many of those in the native population. Although Christian missionaries saw their actions as benevolent, many of the native people did not believe that their religion and traditions should be altered nor that they needed saving. Most native people took both pride and reverence in the land. They viewed the Europeans' practice of farming and logging as impious. Some tribes also viewed the practice of medicine and healing as spiritual. Therefore, hostilities worsened when disease struck the native population. Unable to cure those infected with their own traditional healing practices, many native people turned to Christianity for resolution. Others, such in the case as the Cayuse, blamed the Christian insiders for their demise and sought swift retribution. Following the massacre, the Cayuse tribe seized some of the surviving mission members as captive. Once news of the massacre at the mission traveled, negotiations and trade were made and the hostages were released. However, a little over a year after the massacre, a violent war erupted between the Cayuse Indians and a militia of 500 Western immigrants. This became the earliest Indian war in the Pacific Northwest. The Cayuse population was overcome and forced to extradite five members of the tribe said to be responsible for the Whitman Massacre. Today, the Cayuse's diminutive population reside on a reservation along with three other tribes 40 miles south of Walla Walla, Washington. The location of the Whitman Massacre has become a national historic site.